a recurring weather story this year in western New York. Record warmth. It's popped up a couple of times this year and in some pretty big ways. I'm exploring one of many possible connections in this week's Heather's Weather Wise. Last week brought several days with record high temperatures in the mid 70s, including the second warmest November day on record. July brought Buffalo's longest heat wave, including the second hottest day on record for any month. These were two completely different weather events in two very different seasons. But the atmosphere is a fluid, so there's always at least some little thread of connection when it comes to major weather events. This time around, I think one of them is La Nina. La Nina is characterized by an area of unusually cool water on the surface of the eastern Pacific Ocean. Now, because Earth's oceans and the atmosphere are so closely connected, a big change in what's normal on the surface of the ocean causes a big change in what could be normal in the atmosphere as well. And that can have impacts on entire seasons around a big part of the northern hemisphere. Signs of a developing La Nina were detected over the summer using something called the Oceanic Nino Index, or ONI. When it's negative, we're in a La Nina phase. The La Nina signal has only gotten stronger since the middle of the summer. Here's how a La Nina generally impacts North America. There tends to be an area of above normal precipitation because the jet stream is a little bit more active across parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes. There's also an area of anomalously warm air in parts of the South and Eastern states. It's important to remember that each La Nina is different and some are stronger than others. That being said, I think there's enough to make a link here. Check out this series of temperature anomalies starting back in midsummer. The areas of yellow and orange represent unusually warm spots. One of these warm blobs pretty persistently pops up in the eastern U.S., a typical La Nina region. Now let's look at precipitation. Here's a look at the precipitation anomaly over the past six months. You can see that here in the areas of purple and green. That shifted a little bit to the south of where a typical La Nina sets up, but I think that connection is still there. It's also worth noting that it's been a very busy tropical season. And yeah, studies have shown a La Nina connection there too, at least for the Atlantic Basin. So I think that's some pretty solid evidence that this year's moderate La Nina did have at least some hand in the day-to-day -day weather that led to those two separate record warm temperature events. But all of that being said, there are a lot more variables at play when it comes to weather and the climate. And I explored those variables a little bit more deeply in a recent episode of Climate Minute, which you can see anytime by heading to WGRZ.com slash climate. That's it for this week's Heather's Weather Wise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember it's good to be a geek.